Good day folks, Benjamin Yurkovich here with Washington Weather Chasers. We have a system moving into Washington State right now and a cold front is going to pass across the state as we head into tonight. And then as we head later into the week, we are going to have the chance of an atmospheric river. And then we are still talking about the possibility of a stronger storm, but there's a ton of uncertainty with that. This is just one model particularly the Canadian model today. Now, looking at satellite imagery, we can see the clouds associated with the system moving through and the overlaid composite radar. We can see over here, the cold front is beginning to make its way closer to the coast. After this cold front passes through, there's gonna be some post frontal showers and some instability that's gonna to form tomorrow. And we are gonna have the chance of there being isolated thunderstorms. And the European model seems to think that there's gonna be the highest chance in Western Washington around Snohomish County. This is looking at the six hour average lightning flash density right around Snohomish County. Uh, there's probably gonna be some sort of convergent zone and it'll pose the chance of a lightning strike tomorrow. Also some isolated strikes showing up east of the Cascades. And if we look at the HRRR model here, we can see we're looking at the zero to three kilometer above ground level cape, basically the instability in the lower part of the atmosphere. And there is some low level cape that's gonna be floating around tomorrow. And we see that bit of instability right there around Snohomish County. And it's not a ton, but around here it doesn't take much to get some interesting looking showers, similar to what we had last weekend. But there is going to be a higher concentration of low level instability out there on the coast tomorrow. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is some lightning and thunder out there on the coast. And right here on this HRRR sounding I just pulled, it's actually showing a possible hazard type of there being marginal severe. So if you're out there on the coast, be watching for some interesting showers and the possibility of lightning and thunder. And then as we head into the week, Monday is gonna be a bit drier than Sunday. And then heading into Wednesday, there may be some rain later in the day. And then a stronger system is gonna approach the region on Thursday evening into Friday. And this system is gonna end up being a little bit windy along that cold front as it comes ashore. This most recent European run shows there being segments within that cold front having gusts up over 60 miles per hour as it comes ashore the Washington coast. And it will also be breezy inland as it comes in, but the details on that are going to be refined as we get closer as this is six days out. This is comparing several models looking at the position of this atmospheric river as it approaches the region later this week. And many of them agree, most of them agree on position and timing with it coming through on Thursday night through Friday morning. And rainfall amounts so far aren't looking totally crazy because it doesn't seem to stall over the region for too long. So we'll just have to see how this progresses as time goes on. And then zooming out later into the week into Friday, Saturday timeframe, there is still this signal for the jet extension showing up, but exactly what happens with that jet extension is in question, and the models are having a difficult time determining exactly what kind of storm it's wanting to form, which is no surprise considering how far out there it actually is. On this morning run of the European run, it still develops a mid-latitude cyclone, but it brings it into South Oregon, and this is gonna continue to change run after run, and there's a whole bunch of members in the ensemble data that still shows a powerful low somewhere near the coast, but there's no guarantees on that. Looking at the GFS run, it struggles to develop that wave, but I wouldn't be surprised if it begins to show up more in later model runs. And just for fun, we're gonna take a look at the Canadian model, which develops that wave into a very powerful mid-latitude cyclone and brings it right next to the Washington coast. Now, I'm not saying this will happen, but it's still interesting to see that that signal is there on some of the model. And just because it's interesting to note, I'm gonna pull up some of the European ensemble members from this morning's EPS run. So this is member number one, showing a pretty beastly low right off the coast. This is member number two, which has an intensifying mid-latitude cyclone coming even closer to Washington State. But then there are other members which are much weaker and have this low being much further south. And here's another interesting solution. And here's another interesting solution, which has the mid-latitude cyclone rapidly intensifying and then burrowing in right there at the mouth of the Columbia River. And then the next member is weaker. And then we have member number six, which also shows a strong system. And member number seven, which brings it further south into Southern Oregon. And then member number nine, 
shows kind of an unorganized system. So all this to say, um, there still is a signal for there being the possibility of some kind of storm in the region late the next week, but the details on that storm are super uncertain. Is it going to be a weaker storm that's going to have much less consequences? Or is it going to be a stronger storm that's going to cause some issues in the region? Or is it just going to be a mid-latitude cyclone that forms way off the coast? At this point, we do not know. But just kind of keeping an eye on that signal as we head later into the week. All right, folks, if you are enjoying these videos, please make sure and like and subscribe. And if you like this video, you'll probably like the one right over my head there. And I will go ahead and talk to you guys later.